Mulligans is about two college-age best friends who go home for the summer and they're working on the golf course and staying with one of the friend's families and the family is threatened to be torn apart when one of them makes a mistake. There's nothing to say if it's already said It's the places you go It's the thoughts in your head and it's you It's you I see And there's nothing to lose if you give it away It's the time that you try, it's the time that you need And it's you, it's you I see So turn Dude, you I don't even know who that is! Come on, Don't fucking touch me! enough! What are, you, what are you doing, Dad? Why is everyone yelling? There's nothing So turn around If you know what you want You don't ever have to be On your own And the mistake is that he has an affair with his best friend's dad. For me, the word mulligans is actually more the story of the dad and whether he gets a second chance in his life. Chase's character was like a, a baseball that flies through a window and a family has to deal with it, whether it be they find the kid who did it or they throw the ball back out and they fix the window. It's, just, it's, a, it's a really good, I guess, um, way of looking at the story. And, and really the crux of the story is how the family deals with it, the, rep, uh, the repercussions of after that affair has happened and then it's found out about and how the best friend, the son, Tyler, played by Derek James, how he now sees his best friend in this new light, how he sees his father, how he becomes more of a father figure himself uh, for his little sister, Bertie, played by Gracie Bakovic. And, and then the, the very in, intense relationship between the mother and the father, uh, Stacy and Nathan, played by Taya Gill and Dan Payne, and it, it was really fun to, to delve into that because it's a relationship that is functioning, which I see in so many families and, and marriages. It's from all outside appearances, it's a lot of smiles and laughter and it seems to be wonderful, but the, what happens behind closed doors is quite a different story. Charlie wrote a really good story to where it's very rare that you have two protagonists. And we like to think that Stacy and Dan were both protagonists in the story. So whenever they would have conflict with one another, at the beginning of the film we tried to make them always passing one another, always one going one way, one going the other. They never had a, a real moment where they sat down and talked to one another until after their argument. And then everything after that, we put them in one shot and put them right next to each other and kind of gave them no choice but to be there and to kind of face the music that was caused by Nathan's decision. Nathan is a, a father as a result of a teen pregnancy. Um, didn't get a lot of chance to explore youth and his own life and his own needs, wants and desires and uh, sort of fell into the family dynamic straight away and over the course of 20 years fell into a pattern of existence that denied a lot of the things that came out about from not being able to explore that part of his life. 20 years in he meets somebody that is the catalyst for the change that he's always wanted and takes a risk at living his life at the time that he's I guess in a way midlife crisis in the way that he's always wanted to and again choices that large come with great ramifications and repercussions and he goes through the journey of making right what could possibly go wrong. Stacy is definitely a challenging role. <laughs> Probably the saddest role I've ever had to play. I had to really dig deep to all those sad points in my life, uh, which I haven't had to do so intensely before for a project. I've learned a lot about me through this, through this movie and, and through this character and, and in a way I've embraced the challenge and embraced the fears of uh, going to, to places of great sadness for myself in, in order to portray her.
Uh, Tyler goes from being the mayor of the town, everybody loves him, to just his life sucks and everything he thought he had. You know, he's quoted in the movie as saying, this is going to be the best summer ever, and then it's like the worst summer ever. But I affiliated with Tyler's character because I remember when my parents divorced, so the character of Tyler to me was kind of whatever Derek and I would discuss and I found out that you know, he had a similar situation where he and I, we found a happy medium really quickly on the character of Tyler because we both had been in that situation before. He wrote like situations and isms and, and scenes that were like stuff that had actually happened or conversations that had actually happened. So I think that he tried to capture the realness of our friendship. Gracie, who played Birdie, it's the innocence of childhood and the oblivion. She just doesn't realize everything that's going on. Where the character is a really smart kid for her age, but there's still that part of where she doesn't realize the scope of everything, the magnitude of everything that's going on. From the words of the mouths of babes, as they say, everything that comes out of her mouth is, is very telling. Charlie and I had made a, we made a conscious effort to, to really make Chase's character, the character of Chase, a, uh, an antagonist that could at least receive sympathy from, from certain parts of the audience. And we decided to really make him a genuine character who was really trying to help. He just found himself in kind of a, kind of a whirlwind that he couldn't get himself out of. The, the gay character comes into the lives of this seemingly perfect family and it ends up being all torn apart. But in reality, all of them had been making sacrifices and the truth in the end is what wins. And so he was really the impetus for what will turn out to be a better life for all of them. I hope that this film um, instigates conversation with people. I hope that when they walk out of the, the theater, they've enjoyed their time. It is a drama with some light moments, and so I think that you know people will laugh here and there. Um, but I hope it, it's a conversation starter, that people look at, at their, their lives, their relationships, people that they know, and it causes them to go, huh, what is this all about? What is marriage about? What are relationships about? Um, how do we define family and when is it appropriate to give second chances? You know, like it's like any story that has love and conflict and, and struggle and whatnot in it. It's, it's a story that's worth telling.